Tony here for the Civ Sim channel, welcoming you to another exciting historical battle for War Thunder by Gaijin Entertainment. Here I'm taking up the Forkerwolf 190A, the uh, premium version, uh, hence why it's got all the uh, extra decals. Usually you're uh, limited to only two decals, uh, but this one has four. Um, because when you buy certain premium aircraft, you get uh, certain uh, <coughs> amount of golden eagles for a certain amount of time with uh, specials. And obviously below, this is, as you can tell, probably a Berlin map. The wonderful city of Berlin is now below us. Uh, one of the interesting things with this map is it usually spawns me in the direction of the city, so I have to turn the plane around at an angle, so that way I don't fly into the buildings. and. Usually every few games there's someone who just uh, decides to spawn and um, takes off in that spawn position and they just fly into the buildings because with the Falker Wolves especially you need a lot of room to take off in and um, if you don't have that room well you're probably not going to make it and you're going to crash into the building and well just like that chap did. Uh, if you look at the bottom right hand of the corner one of the planes crashed. So, uh, again, you, you want to make sure that um, you're avoiding those buildings and that you're turning around. Another thing is, especially with Germans, you want to be able to use your climbing advantage because one of the things about German planes is that they're very good at climbing. And that's a very good advantage that the Volkerwolf has. Uh oh, what's that? Uh, turn that off. Alright, now that that's taken care of. Um, one of the things about historical battles, um, for those of you who do not know, is that it takes a very long time to get into the action. Um, arcade battles, usually you're right in the action immediately. With historical battles um, and full real battles, it does take a while um, to uh, get in the right position and to um, get, um, if you will, aligned uh, with everyone else. Uh, but that's kind of one of the things that makes it... Uh, historical battles very interesting is that it allows you to be more tactical and more strategic. Sure you have to be uh, strategic in arcade uh, as well but in historical battles it, it brings the strategic level up a little bit because there are certain positions that you're going to want to take. You're going to want to um, position yourself on the map and you do that uh, by either climbing or going to a certain section of the map um, and obviously in historical battles, one of the things is that usually if you find someone, and you're going to see in a few minutes, I'm going to have um, a dogfight with one of the AI, which is the only plan I managed to uh, get close enough in order to kill, um, at least for the first kill. Um, then later I'll do an XP 50 and then I'll be chasing down a uh, Spitfire. But um, one of the things with historical battles is that you're separated from everyone, so if you do get into a dogfight, usually you can get in there and uh, pretty much stay and uh, finish the kill. There's um, one of the bombers I was going after first, but uh, one of my teammates got him before I could. So uh, now I'm just looking and I'm diving down now, and I believe I've spied an AI. One of the things is that this is a uh, recorded version that was after the game. It's a replay. Um, Hopefully in the uh, advanced patch when they uh, continue with the patches, hopefully the reviews will uh, enable more of the like the gun sight and things like that and also the uh, icons for the aircraft. But right now I'm searching uh, for the AI and climbing up to the clouds. I want to try and keep the height advantage as long as I can. Um, unless I see someone who's higher than me, then at that point I'm going to want to dive. Um, just to gain some speed and also to uh, get away from uh, any enemies that might attack me. Um, definitely if you do see others that are higher above you, you want to try and get with your allies. Oh, I'm on something now. Yep, there goes one of the AIs that I dived on. Again, you want to have the height advantage there. So that way when you dive down, it's always better to dive down on the enemy aircraft than to try and tail them. Because, as you'll see in a little while, when you're trying to tail someone, it you lose a lot of speed, and also your aiming, uh, your firing accuracy also goes down a little, and also along with your speed. So, 
you're more likely to get killed diving on someone than chasing someone down. And if you're chasing someone down and you they build up some speed and distance against you, what will happen is that you'll start to miss them a little bit. The ammo spread won't hit them as much and it won't do an, as much damage as say just diving upon them. Now right now I'm paying the position with one of the AI and I'm going to be doing something that you really probably shouldn't be doing in a Falker Wolf. Um, but this is one of the reasons why I'm putting this video up is to you know, show you some of my mistakes and hopefully you can learn from them. Uh, as I'm learning from them by re-watching these. And one of the things is that I'm in a turn fight with one of the AI. Now the AI are, the AI are pipelines which are exceedingly slow and also exceedingly maneuverable. And so one of the things is trying to get on them is kind of hard. In fact, it's easier for them to get on your tail, like he is now, um, than to get them off. And so right now I'm just turning, trying to get onto the biplanes six, and trying to maneuver here. Also trying to watch out for uh, AI. I mean AA flak. Um, the anti-aircraft flak can be very deadly. Um, usually every other game there's a plane that does get shot down by it, so it's very powerful, so you want to try and avoid that. Alright, right now I'm diving down. Try and avoid that. I'm also trying to build some distance with me and the AI so I can climb back up, or in this case turn, and get back onto that biplane. There he is. Just to head on past there. And what I should probably be doing is climbing instead of turning. Because I'm losing a lot of speed here. And that's one of the things with a lot of aircraft is even with the um, Zeros and the Japanese aircraft, you want to. There's another head on past. Uh, you want to. Uh, really have the altitude and speed advantage like I'm going right now I'm going into the climb right now and that gives a lot of um, energy to the aircraft and also allows you to build altitude so you can dive on them and also gives you more energy when in the turn now you want to be careful and sometimes um, you want to throttle down when you're in a turn if you're ha building a lot of speed if you're trying to catch someone who's slower than you because if you're going after a bomber or someone, you might overshoot. So you usually want to make sure that you're working that throttle a little bit. So that way you're able to not overshoot. And yeah, watch out for that AI. Uh, AA. And speaking of AI, there goes um, Tusso, I believe. That's his name. Mm -hmm. So, there he is. Big ball of flames. And going going down and so now I'm just turning the scouting seeing if I can spot any enemy aircraft <clears throat> also watching out for the AA again I can't overstress how deadly that AA is but uh, one of the reasons I'm also making these uh, videos is to try and encourage more people to get into historical battles yes it does take a lot longer as you can see um, it's already been six minutes and I've just gotten one kill but um, you know it, it's a very rewarding game you do get a lot more credits and experience uh, for the one kill um, and it can be a lot of fun and also you don't you know you if you're more of a tactical person where you like to think strategy and things like that then this is probably gonna be the mode for you arcade is you know the fast-paced boom and zoom type uh, battle where you're in it and you're out very quickly historical battles are more for tactics and obviously for real it's more for those who like things like propellers and, and uh, not propellers but I should say uh, uh, throttles gauges um, realistic experience flying from inside the cockpit All right. and now I'm maneuvering because I've spotted the uh, XP 50 and uh, he, he made himself a pretty easy kill, I have to admit. He wasn't really doing much to get out of my way, as you'll see in a second. And I'm just maneuvering, trying to get a good spot. There he is, low. 
He's climbing, and there goes his wing. So, now, one of the things that you want to do if someone's diving on you, you don't necessarily want to climb. You kind of want to dive down and try and dodge. You don't want to start climbing when someone's booming and zooming you because you've got the speed advantage against them. So when you're doing that, you're just, um, or when the opponent's doing that, when you're slowing yourself down, you're making uh, the enemy um, get you very easily. And there's the Spitfire, who is also low to the ground, and there I am. Instead of turning, I'm climbing up, and I'm going to do a series of S-turns and loops. So I'm going to loop around and try and catch him. So here we go. So this is where the exciting part gets in games like this. The first few minutes are just trying to get to the uh, right spot and then everything starts to fall in place after that. So I am diving on him. Again, I'm cutting the throttle so that way I'm not overshooting. Still overshot a little though. But that's alright, I'm going to just go back up. I'm not going to get into a turn fight with a spit, especially because the spit can outmaneuver me. Although he's been, I think, damaged up. There's one of my teammates also going after him, so. So he's a little occupied, but again, I'm gonna continue to loop. Looping around. Now, it's uh, probably a pretty interesting thing about how the uh, spit dies, but I'll get to that in a second. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, about chasing aircraft is you really want to really dive on them. You don't really want to be, you know, chasing them like this. Because, uh, when you fire, sometimes you're not going to be as accurate. And you will probably take out more ammo. Um, again, there we go with the spread. And I wish I had the, um, indicator that the aiming indicator, the gun sight, to show where the indicator is. There, oh, there's my teammate again. Going up, looping around again. He managed to take out the spit again. He was going too fast. So he overshot. Slowing down, performing an S curve here. So that way I don't overshoot. And you want to be able to catch them, but at the same time, you don't want to overshoot them. I'll go into the uh, tree line over here, and he's building up the distance. So, now, I'm shooting at a pretty far distance, which probably isn't such a good thing, because I'm getting low on ammo, which is not necessarily a, a situation you want to be in. What you want to do is you want to be able to pull in closer before you aim. Right? And also, when you're doing tree level type fighting, you want to make sure that you're staying above the tree line, that you're not critical to him at the wing, but you want to make sure that you're staying relatively above the tree line because you don't want to crash. I've seen a lot of people go to the tree line level and in certain aircraft they're not easy to pull up and so they just end up flying into the tree and crashing. So you want to make sure that you're maintaining your height above him. As you can see what I'm doing, I'm maintaining my height above him so that way I can aim at him but I can also have some room to maneuver so I don't hit any of the trees. And you gotta watch that throttle. Gotta be uh, very quick on that. And there he is. Now here's a dangerous spot. Now again, I'm climbing. I don't want to just crashing into that tree. There, so. um. And yeah, make sure I'm keeping a distance here. And there he is. It's about this time, I think I'm about ran out of ammo. So in um, what I like to say is a um, herbal way, I decided to uh, go over him and bank my wings. Or just go fire at me and then crash. But um, Which is a pretty interesting thing that he crashes just a few moments after I do that. But yep, there he goes, he's down. So, that was pretty interesting. 
again, uh, one of the things uh, that I want to do is sh show some airman chimp. I wasn't trying to ram him, by the way. I was trying to just show him that I was baking my wings and heading back that he uh, survived, but uh, it was not to be. He ended up crashing. So that would be, I believe, my third or fourth kill. I lost track. Yeah, fourth kill in this game. And in historical battles, if you get, you know, four or five kills, that's a lot, especially depending on how many people are in the game, and there wasn't that many in this game, so four kills is a pretty good one. I haven't yet to get an ace. There's always that fifth kill that either the timer runs out, or they crash, or something happens where I'm not able to get the kill, because even if you critical them, and they're going down, and you're about to get the kill of the game, and someone hits the last AI, and the you know counter runs out just before they crash, you don't get the kill, and... So the game tends to kill steel from the fifth kill, but four kills is good for a historical battle. And now I'm just making my way back to one of the bases to repair and obviously reload. And it does take a while uh, in this in the historical battles in order to do it, but it is a pretty interesting game. I, oh, there's one of the bombers, I think, bombing away one of the B-17s. And now what I'm doing is I'm laying at the base, but the B-17 is nearby bombing. So if the B-17 had wanted, he could have killed me, but, um, as you'll see in a little bit, but he just stuck with the ground targets. And, uh, one of my, there's only, uh, him and one of the other players left at this point, if I'm not mistaken. And now I'm just going in, just flying towards one of the runways. Again, I'm parallel to the runway now, flying what, uh, Pilots call a base leg. Okay, way to go on the final approach. Now, one of the things I did wrong here is that I started to turn into the runway a little sooner than I should have. What I should have done, like right here, I was paralleling the runway, and this is where I started to turn a little too early. I should have gone a little bit further before starting to turn into the runway, but if I wanted to be uh, professional about it. But this is a game, so don't always have to be uh, so professional. Again, you want. Make sure you're slowing down. Usually I put the gear down before the flaps. And you want to put the flaps down only when you're guaranteed you're landing. Now I am coming in a little bit fast for this, so I should slow down a little bit more. Because I will roll off the runway just a little bit. And again, if you're going too fast, one of the things is you usually want to just take off again and go around instead of crashing. But a lot of people just crash land anyway. So, But you want to make sure that if you're crash landing that it's a soft crash landing and not a hard one because if you do crash a little too hard you kind of die so you want to be careful of that and again you want to keep that nose up just a little bit you want so that way you're not plowing plane into the ground there we go and just break at that point and we'll go over the trestle just a little but I'm still going to be able to repair and everything so, no harm, no foul. There we go. Okay, we've come to a stop. And about this point, the uh, B-17 is going to do its uh, little bomb thing. Taking out one of the AI nearby. Uh, which, and there we go, I've repaired and climbing. And I'm going to chase that B-17 who could have easily killed me on that runway, but uh, he was uh, busy just breaking up the uh, ground kills. And uh, one of my teammates uh, got on him and uh, actually got him before I could. So um, that's basically the game. The game ended about this point. So I'm going to cut the video here. Uh, again, I want to thank everyone for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And uh, remember, watch that six of yours. And remember, always try and keep that energy. Have a great day, everyone. See you next time.